Hi, I'm Ryan Payne with Garage Gurus, and today I have a tech tip for you on disc thickness variation and lateral runout. Oftentimes, a vehicle gets brought into the shop, and the complaint is some sort of pedal pulsation. Most of the time, we see it's misdiagnosed as a warp rotor. And in general, rotors don't warp. If I were to take this rotor and hang it off the front side of this toolbox, leave it there for a year, it's not going to begin to sag over to the front of the toolbox. All right. What actually causes that pedal pulsation is actually going to be disc thickness variation. Now, to describe that a little better, the reason we get disc thickness variation is actually from lateral runout. So if you take a look at this rotor and think about runout, and what runout is is actually a wobble on the axis. All right, and I'll talk about the causes of that later on. But if you think about when that rotor wobbles back and forth on its running axis and think about a brake pad hitting it every time it comes by, whether it be on the front side or over on the back side of that rotor. All right, if it's a semi-metallic style pad, it will actually wear spots into the rotor. All right, actually take some material off the rotor over time. In the instance of a ceramic pad, it will actually transfer pad material onto the rotor, actually thickening it. So what that causes is what I mentioned before, disc thickness variation where certain spots of the rotor are thicker or thinner than others. So as this rotor runs through the caliper with the pads applied, all right, it will actually cause fluid displacement, push the pistons out, and actually cause the pedal to begin to pulsate. All right? So let's go over and take a look on the vehicle and see how we actually measure lateral runout. Okay, over here at our vehicle, let's talk about the setup and the tools we're going to use here. First thing you probably notice is I have a vice grip style dial indicator set up uh, on here already attached. So it's attached at a solid mounting point. And then I've got the dial indicator about a half inch from the outer edge of the rotor itself. Now, one thing you don't want to forget, I've got my all five load nuts in here and I've got them, got them tightened down evenly. Okay. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to rotate this rotor around. All right. And what we're looking for is less than two thousandths. That's the spec on this particular vehicle is 0 0.002. And if you look as I rotate this rotor around, you'll see that this rotor is actually showing right at about six thousandths of runout, which tells us that this rotor has excessive lateral runout, which in turn has caused this thickness variation, uh, which is why this car has come in for a pedal pulsation. So let's get over to the toolbox and talk about how to repair this condition. So when we're discussing lateral runout or excessive lateral runout, like we just measured on the vehicle behind me, a lot of times what we find is a stack tolerance problem. Most rotors nowadays, I think we can all agree, are hubless rotors, all right? So they actually have to be attached or slid on to a hub bearing like this. And so what I mean by stack tolerance is, if you think about a hub that has been on the vehicle for 100,000 miles or so, we end up with this rust buildup in between the mating surfaces of the hub and the rotor itself. A small piece of rust on this hub can actually cause up to 20 thousandths runout in the rotor. So it is imperative whenever we're replacing rotors, all right, that we take a tool uh, like this one here that can actually slide down over the studs and just your typical cleaning style disc and clean the rest of that hub up to make sure that the mating surfaces between the rotor and the hub are good, all right? Once again, we don't want that rust buildup in between the two, inducing runout, which like we've discussed, will cause thickness variation. All right, at that point, once we've, we've cleaned that up, we measured it, all right, we know that we have an issue here, you got a couple ways to go about repairing this, all right? Uh, number one being machining that rotor, we can do it on, on the uh, bench, or if you've got the equipment, you can actually do it on the car, which is a preferred method here because we can actually match this rotor to the hub bearing, all right? Obviously, your third option would be to replace this rotor uh, if it is excessive like the one we measured behind us. Now, once again, I want to mention you need to make sure you measure that new rotor, especially since we're talking about a problem vehicle, all right? So measure the runout on that new rotor once it's installed to make sure you're going to provide the vehicle back to the customer and they're not going to have any issues with it. For more tech tips like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also smash that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. For more information about Garage Gurus, you can check us out at garagegurus.tech. Thank you.